I'm here with Chloe Chidas. How are you doing today, Miss Chloe Chidas? Uh, hello. What are you <laughs> wearing today? Also, uh, we have to talk about this. This is like, we gotta know. Okay. Well, um, this, if I'm gonna be honest, we're not sporting anything designer today, but this is a dress I got. And I actually don't remember where I got it. So, but this turtleneck, my mom gave it to me. Let's go. I really like it. It just fits right. And I have my boots, my Chloe boots. Chloe boots. That I got a long time ago. And I will never uh, get rid of these. And then I have my push-up bra. Let's <laughs> Not really. This push-up bra, it just, <laughs> you know, I could have gotten a boob job for thousands, hundreds, thousands. Oh. <laughs> but instead of payment plan towards it, but instead... Got one free. Wait, I'm sorry. There's payment plans for boobs. I'm. Sh I mean, I don't know, but because I, think, I think there is though. I didn't know. I think there's payment plans. I mean, for I don't. Jobs. We won't. We won't because be who could afford that, it? Like you know. Like yeah, we won't be doing. Yeah, that. we won't be doing that. But yeah. but anyways, on yeah. the topic. So that's my whole outfit and my ring. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get into so much today. I just okay. like want to say like Chloe's up to so much in California. Um, you may know her as an artist. But she's also doing a lot of work behind the scenes for um, just kind of like other artists um, that are out here and doing really cool stuff under her new label, Psy. Yeah. So that's really cool. Um, let's start from the beginning, though. So okay. where did it all begin? Because she actually started pretty early and not many people know that. So when did you start music? I started uh, music when I was 14. Oh well, I mean, I was playing bass. When I was nine, my dad taught me how to play the bass. And then I started learning other instruments. Yeah. And I began doing music. What attracted you like most? Was it just like the bass guitar or songwriting or was it singing? I watched First. School of Rock. Oh my this God. was probably my biggest in inspiration and influence. Yeah. Maybe Freaky Friday. Let's I think this go. is pretty common for girls my age. So between these two two movies, I, I was sold. I knew that that was my direction, and I've been rocking ever since. That's crazy. <laughs> also, in that time, like I have this theory about Guitar Hero. Do you remember Guitar Hero and like Rock Band? Yes, I never played because I don't play games, Demi. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't play games. Yeah, I don't play games, uh, and that includes video games. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I keep looking at the camera. I think it's funny, but <laughs> I'm, like, talking to you, but I'm also talking to them. No, um, yeah, I, I play – I never played Guitar Hero. That's crazy. I just feel like all the kids that were playing Guitar Hero for some reason started bands, like, mm -hmm. 10 years later, which is kind of cool. Also, wait a second. We might have someone – coming in on this interview who may it be should we check yeah, please check. hold <laughs> yeah yeah it's good Whoa! Ah! Yeah. It's me, we're rolling <laughs> we're here we're here we're, we're lit here we're it's incredible it's electric we're feeling amazing what else up chloe what's up demi yeah how are we oh, feeling? Nice What's up, Jordan? Good to meet you. Hell yeah, here. Give me a hug. Good to see you. How are you, Keon? We all got so excited that you arrived, and it's just perfect. We're Can I excited. sit down right here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what? Let's just roll with this. So what are you guys, what are you guys doing today on this wonderful... I just started a song this morning. I think it's incredible. The drum beat is sick, and but I don't have a vocal melody yet, and that's what I was doing just bef before I came here. You'll find it. I will. Uh, you will oh, find it's coming. It. Yeah, it's don't, coming don't big worry. Time. Yeah. Yeah, I ate some fried eggs uh, before I came here. Uh, just two with a little pepper jack cheese. That's crazy. What are you wearing today? You want to know what I'm wearing today? I do, I do. Uh, this is actually uh, Balenciaga from the most recent I knew drop. it, I, I knew it, this I knew is, it. Which is sick. It's actually a uh, Von de Vandersfield uh, collection. No way. Yep, I know, which is crazy. Um, I've got a ton of bread now, which is crazy. So I can afford things like these pants, which are... Uh, these are actually dead stock, uh, 2019 Levi 502s. Um, on my feet, you know I always gotta have my Clyde Rawhide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, always, always. 
And um, and that basically completes. It's crazy. Socks it, says, also. it says Nike, but yeah. they're clods. No, they're 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 they're, they're Clyde rawhides. Okay, yeah. okay. Socks do rawhides. Uh, Damn, are you you're friends with them, right? <laughs> We go way back. Yeah. Me and Clyde, yeah. I saw you because I saw you um, last year at Fashion Week. At Fashion Week. No, he's. And a, I was like, there's no way they're friends. No, like, me and no. Are. I actually knew Clyde from. We, we met back in New York, Fashion Week. You 20. sampled the. Yeah, the new line. Yeah, yeah. the new line. No, yeah. back in 2016, we go way back. It's crazy. Claude uh, Rawhide is such a <laughs> inspiration. Dude, it's so legendary. He's a legend, and yeah. um, and and we just um, we just really clicked. Wow, so you're probably sporting. I mean, at least. I mean, I at get a, least at least thirty five k. It was a house show tour, yes. and um, and we brought the whole band along. Um, uh, I enlisted Chloe in backup vocals and her incredible social media skills. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting him to do BTS right now too. So nice. it's just like. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it, we uh, we went to a lot of uh, different uh, small houses, including Chico, where there was a huge um, snake. Mm-hmm. That was the first show, and there was, there was was controversy, and there was also a lot of people there. There was a lot of there was a lot of people. There was there. a lot. I of, did not know what to expect, and it was packed. I'm not just saying that. There was a ton of young I'm Chico not you Chiconians. Guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I pulled. They up. were going crazy, and it was to be honest, it was so cool because it was uh, very community oriented. Each city community is number one. You know, they brought their uh, you know they had on their their indie band shirts. That's right. And they were ready to rage. These they were really ready to yeah, rage. Yeah, they were like not older than like 22, all of them. No. <laughs> you know, but yeah, but older than 18, but not younger. So it was like, they were cool. They were still. Old people are cool too, but they were like. Yeah, yeah. they were. I mean, they were ready to rage. They were ready to get down cool. and dirty. I, I got the sense that that was maybe the first concert that was ever held in Chico. No, that's, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to diss Chico. Chico was awesome. But I did the get back- the sense that they didn't have a ton of shows. No, yeah, and yeah. And that yeah. this was, they were like. This was like an opportunity yeah. for them to let out a lot of pent up energy that uh, needed to be released only yes. at a house show like that. And every backstage <laughs> that we were at was um, someone's bedroom. It's that t- yeah, <laughs> really? yeah, the, yeah. So, you know, easy we. Access. Easy yeah, yeah. Access. Totally. We actually did one show uh, in Portland where they, you know, they, it was a venue and then upstairs they lived there. So it was so cool. Like, yeah. we literally, I mean, a very well equipped, you know, kitchen and like couches and very comfortable and uh we it, just went downstairs and played the show and came back and went to sleep. yeah they were pretty much just all people's houses <laughs> some of them they had thrown shows there before others were just random people like our friend ryan who <laughs> yeah in sacramento who that's where he got them clyde who, rides is, he actually <laughs> gave me these clyde's um Dude. but yeah like we went to sacramento and ryan we, i i talked to ryan on the internet he's he said, you know, I've got a backyard. You guys can throw a show. I said, have you ever thrown a show there before? He says, no, but it's an open backyard. <laughs> so that was sort of the vibe. Um, Ryan brought out his dirt, dirt bike. bike. <laughs> he gave me um, an iguana, fr- like fried. Yep. Like a fried iguana. I later learned, I, I haven't actually caught up with Ryan since this, but I learned that uh, I, it was maybe this is personal. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to incriminate anybody. I th- the point I'm trying to make is that was he was not he, it, it, not allowed to throw a show there. <laughs> <laughs> it was like his like grandma's house or something that he was like Ryan, just man. like crashing in and like his uncle DM'd me and was like, dude, like whatever. I don't. Wanna, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. But shout out to Ryan. We love you. Ryan, Ryan. will love this. He yeah. was so great. Uh, with Seattle too. I'm sorry, not to just go through every fucking city <laughs> on the tour, but just you know, uh, the, Seattle was the, so fucking cool. You guys, yeah. it was really cool. Seattle, the evil house. Shout and, out to Evil House. And if you're watching this and you throw shows, keep do- going. Keep going because we need we need you to throw the house. We need you shows. to throw the house shows because um, every Who else? time they come to get the artists come together. It's community. It's community, and you get inspired. So if you're watching this and you are one of these people, keep doing it. It's electric. It's yeah, it changes lives, <laughs> and albums. Yeah, and movies and, and all that careers. Kind of stuff. Yeah, truly though. We met on an airplane, actually. That's right. Remember that? I know. I totally forgot. I was on my way to Dubai. <laughs> I was on. I'm, I was on my way to the uh, consulate of Dubai. 
And Chloe, what were you? You were on your way to Dubai. Well, I was as well. scouting. <laughs> okay. I was scouting for uh, the next star of PSY. So In I Dubai. was. Yeah. On well, everywhere. I'm always just <laughs> laser eyes. Hashtag female producer. Who's the next golden goose? <laughs> and um, I see. I see Keon <laughs> uh, sitting there, and he was. Uh, he had his guitar out. So I thought, okay, that's we're in the right direction. Um, and he was playing customer service so loudly, bumping the, and you know, I have those, those, those ears, those eagle ears, mm-hmm. those, those ears of taste. So right. when I heard I'm working, I'm working, right. it just, you know, it hit my soul. It, it lit a fire with me. And then he went to go check his TikTok and you know, it was, it was blowing up and I see all the connection. I was just math in my head going, going, going. <laughs> And then uh, <laughs> shortly after our rendezvous in Dubai, we went. We both discovered that we were local to Los Angeles. So we met back up in Los Angeles. Um, we threw a legendary house show in Chloe's backyard. This is true. Um, I watched Chloe jump off the roof. This is all true. I, I you know, I watched her energy and I knew that um, we had to link and build. That's right. And, uh, you know, something I like to do uh, with the shows we throw and with PSY is do kind of these um, community rehearsals where everyone comes together and all the artists get to meet each other. So we did one of those and he played and I was like, dang, like really good, like one of the best I've like ever seen or whatever. Really, truly can. And uh, you're a really great performer. And I can't then, disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, really, no, like it's really good. And I was like, damn, this is tight. And then, uh, yeah, the hype was, was so real. And it is so real. And it's real if you're watching this. And Chloe just has such a talent for um, social media and capturing and telling stories. And so, um, uh, and, and throwing shows. So I, you know. That's how though. It was Halloween. And I got very drunk, um, and I went home, a black blacked out drunk. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm in the shower. This is all hearsay from my now husband because I don't remember any of this. Right. And I fell, like in our house, and uh, I kept my t- the next morning he's like, "Dude, you knocked your tooth out." I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Oh fuck!" And I was just like, "Okay." Uh, went to breakfast, took a selfie. And that's the end of it. And then it was that. That's really it. That's how it initially happened. So um, I don't know. Like I would say, don't get drunk. But like, I still do get drunk. So I don't know. Not all the time. But like, I don't know. There's no moral to the story other than like, now I like it. And then yeah, I don't know. After I lost my tooth, I this is and this is a true story. I well, it cracked, and then I had to go get it removed by a dentist. And after my dentist appointment. I thought it was I was craving a big tuna hoagie, <laughs> and Wait, so really? I went. And I literally I went to work. I had to go to work, Are and, you and before work I got this oh gigantic God. tuna hoagie with like this crusty bread, and I like like I was like it'll be fine. Like I'll just bite into it, and so I like had all this like gauze in my mouth, like on my gums, and like it was bleeding and shit. And I was like. Ah, like it was, it was so stupid. Like I was like trying to like not like power through this humongous tuna oh hoagie, <laughs> like with a freshly removed tooth. Dude. So stupid. Wow, similar thing to me though. I had a fake one in, and I had a tortilla chip. <laughs> it just fell out. Yeah. So I don't know. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm just getting over pneumonia, which is something that's been happening in, in my life recently. I got uh, pneumonia. Hmm. Which is interesting. It's weird because we live in LA. I picture that's like Alaska, like just yeah. You know. It's more like 1800s in yeah, like Vermont, like, like yeah. What the heck? I know, darling. I know. <laughs> like, How do you feel now? Is it it's lingering? It's, it's lingering a little bit. Um, I mean, it's like I just kind of feel a bit run down, and uh, <laughs> I do. I feel I feel pretty run down, <laughs> just beat down by that sickness, by that damn, by that damn thing. And um, sorry. You think it's funny? You think pneumonia is <laughs> no, funny? No, but I don't know. What's so funny about it, Chloe? No, just like uh, just you being beaten down. I, I am. I've been just, beaten down. The way been, you said it, was, I've been I felt it. I felt it. Stricken down by that. I felt it. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry. It's just like because I'm worried. It's just damn run down. It's hot as hell in here. It really is. I think Chloe just <laughs> likes to have fun, and not that many people really like to have fun. And I Aww, and I like to have fun that's too. That's so nice. That's really nice. And I like to have fun. So it's fun. When I get together with Chloe, it's fun. Oh, 
That's nice. Um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you go. Tell me. So, what do you like about me? <laughs> uh, I think we're. Um, I think we both like to do things for adrenaline in ways. I mm-hmm. think we're both performers. I yeah, would that's say absolutely we're both. True. Yeah. We both like attention. We both love attention. We're both hams. Um, I think you're a great songwriter. Thank you. Truly. And so uh, talking to you about music is always fulfilling. Mm-hmm. And, um, fuck, uh, dude, I think that, <laughs> I don't even, I don't know, I think. And that's the T. I mean, that's we're, the tea, we're, I mean really. it's basically beast mode uh, un- unlocked. Yeah. Unleashed. Unchained. So yeah, I was really inspired by <laughs> School of Rock, and that's, I mean, I watched it every single day, that movie, and I think that was, is one of the main reasons that I'm doing music today. I don't know what else to say, that's the honest truth. <clears throat> How about Kitten? Like, tell us about... So there's uh, different members, and... Um, person that uh was producing my music at the time was really into like bruce springsteen and dave matthews band he wasn't into dave matthews band but he thought that the idea of having a great band that people followed was really cool and i think that rubbed off on me clearly or had an impact on how kitten was live <clears throat> and that was uh, a big part of my life and still is so we played a lot of shows and uh didn't you open for the Smashing Pumpkins? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What was that like? What it were they was like so as cool. I, I don't even remember how exactly it happened, but um, it was really cool. After the show, we got to hang out with, with Billy. Is it Corgan? Okay, sorry. I know it's something I know it's something with like a C O R <clears throat> anyways, and he told us some great stories. Um and yeah, it was so cool to to play it's always you know, to get to play in front of that many people. It's always amazing, and I'm thankful that I've even gotten to experience that in life. Because I I know that you're known for jumping off of things and using your gymnastic kind of like background that you like kind of put into your... <clears throat> it's really hard to say, you know, because we live so in the present, so I can... And I feel now I do so many, so much performance, but it's di- it's not exactly the same. It's... Almost performance art, I guess. I, I hate myself that I say that. It's so cringy, but like it's true. So <clears throat> it's hard for me to compare the performances that I've done at like festivals versus performances that I do more now and that I enjoy doing now, which are more like per- like performance art based. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. yeah. So, but as far as to answer your question, um, I think when I playing shows uh in LA with kitten uh is and was always really fun yeah because it's like you know I worked really hard at building an an audience here and so uh playing shows to that audience is really fun I don't know let's go into sigh please because that is a really cool thing that that you've begun only a few years ago right so tell us like what made you want to start Psy. Like, what was the... Yeah. Yeah, what does it stand okay. for? Um, wait, I'm going to... This is rewind really quick. I think this is... Podcasts are so amazing. And thank you for having me because it's a slice of history, you know? It's like a journal. Like, I get to see where I was. Like, why, you know? So that's really cool, I just want to say. Because I was on a... Uh, I was in a band called Nasty Cherry. Yes. And that was a Netflix show. And I watched that show. Put together by Siri. By Charlie. XCX. Charlie. And I watch it, and I'm like, I just, the things that I say on this show, I'm like, who is this person? I'm like, so, I'm just, who, <clears throat> I'm the same, but I'm in a completely different place than I was, so it's so interesting to watch, you know? I'm just like, will not shut up about so many things, and I'm just in a different place. So, um, that's why I love that we're doing this. But, uh, yeah, so uh, PSY started about two and a half years ago, maybe three now. And it's a record label and a production company and a platform for artists. And yeah. what does it stand for, Sai? Uh, PS, pussy. It stands for Ooh. pussy. So this is my, uh, my mother's idea. 
no. she was like you should call your record label pussy records and i was like that yeah great and then and then it's P- pussy was a little bit uh much for emails <laughs> so then it shortened to psy has your mom been like a big like impact on like your I personality would you she's say? such a boss lady are you mommy's girl uh, or I'm both. Girl. I think I'm like a, I'm both because my dad does music and he taught me music and um, so I'm like I, I love both of them. But um, but yeah, she's fucking cool. I actually wrote in my journal like a couple days ago. I was like I I hope I could somehow be like um, I hope could, I hope I could be hot when I'm older, a hot older lady. And I wrote literally. I was like my mom's hot, so I could do it too. And I shared that with her today, actually. Shout out Chloe's mom. Shout out Chloe's mom. Shout out Chloe's mom. All moms. All hot moms. All hot moms. All right, let's get Keon back to the stage. Woohoo! Hello, uh, my name is Keon, and um, you might know me as Sugar Pit, and I'm happy to be here. Demi, thank you so much for having me. Woohoo! What are you up to, Keon, today? What's the day like I, in, in Sugar Pit's world? In Sugar Pit's world, well, I tell you what, I just signed a record deal Let's go. with Atlantic Records, which is very big time, as you may know. I'm very big time now. <coughs> So many months ago, I might have told you, Demi, I'm busy. I've got to go to work. I'm busy working at a coffee shop or I'm busy valeting or something. But today, what I can tell you, Demi, is that I'm not working a job because I signed a record deal. Yes. <laughs> um, so basically, um, I'm just writing music. I'm my, I don't really leave my house. I did today for this, but I usually don't ever leave my house because I'm busy writing and recording new music. I mean, I've got my whole studio set up in my living room, my drum kit, my bass, my amps, you know, uh, my, I sing. It's all day long. I wake up, I, I, I work for about two hours, then I eat some eggs, and then I work for another three hours. I try and get out, go for a run, take a walk. I come back, I listen to what I've made, and then I try and wrap it up that night. And then the next day, what do I do, Demi? It's a new song. I'm telling you, it's like a sweatshop in there. Ooh. Wait, that's really that's actually a really cool way to describe like what a, you're doing up in there. A sweatshop? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You also play like every instrument every right? instrument every okay. instrument that you hear on my spotify is live drums played by me real guitar played by me sing that's me lyrics i wrote that production i did that it's all it's really all me in my bedroom okay just a little backstory though because speaking of atlantic speaking of just kind of like just the whole scope of things that's right i a year ago pulled up to a Sci show that Chloe had thrown in like the backyard of a UCLA, right? And I pulled up and I saw one of the coolest shows I've ever seen. And Sugar Pit was playing. Um, it was I, my show. That was their first show. Your first show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was first show. And there actually was buzz. I forgot who told me, but someone was like, "Yeah, like Atlantic Records is here, something like that." And I was like that makes sense like these guys are just killing it and like everyone in your band also has like such a cool place in what you do live so thank you so much yes my live yeah. band is incredible like i said that was only one year ago when it's in when it's when i'm recording it's all me in my bedroom but when i play live shows i enlist an incredible uh, uh group of talented musicians including noah dunn on drums uh jake nuffer on guitar Colton Sidell on the bass, and now I've added an incredible new addition to the band, which includes backup vocals, one of which is the great Chloe Chidez. Another is uh, uh, Andrea Valles. I think it's their last name. Sorry, Dre, if I'm if I mess that up. But and and also recently Josephine. Uh, I don't know your last name, Josephine. I'm sorry, but it's a great band. They're talented, and um and that's that. And you're going on tour with Fiddler. Let's I go. just yes, Let's this go. yes. I'm very excited about this. I just got this news about a week ago that I'm go I'm going to be direct support all month in October for the great band Fiddler, which is incredible. I'm going to be playing some of the biggest rooms I've ever played, Demi. <laughs> Huge rooms. I mean, really big rooms. I'm talking a thousand room cap balcony. I mean, I'll, 
Yeah. What I it's such an interesting thing to like the independent artists kind of like signed artists, you know, there's there's pros and cons to them both nowadays with like, you know, the internet and what you can do, but um what has changed in like the way you do art and the way you make music since you've signed? Do you plan on changing anything or what's kind of what's on what's on your mind about I that? I mean, the most important thing is I'm doing I can do it all day now, which is an, an incredible blessing that I'm very grateful for. Uh, um, th- so far, that's been the biggest difference between having to work a job all the time and just being able to focus on music. Um, that said, I am look. I am the music I'm making right now is so much weirder than um, uh, w- previous music that I've done. I'm trying to get as weird as possible, yeah. as aggressive as possible, and as risky and daring as possible, and. Um, and I actually, I, I actually just finished a new album of totally unheard material that is just grotesque and bizarre. And I showed it to my label, and they hated it, actually. Oh, I know. So that's one th- w- interesting thing about s- being signed now is that it has to get approved by um, men who work at a label. Meh. So we'll see if this album comes out. It's called Freaking Out Indoors. Um, I've got a whole nother album to put out before I can even get to that. But, um, you know, maybe when I'm watching, if you're watching this in a year from now, you'll maybe be listening to this album in question. Let's go. What? Okay. So we're going more weird, right? We're going more weird. What's caused that? Like, is just life getting weirder? Like what's going on in, in Sugar Pit's like personal life? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think I... If, well, the most important thing to me is as I search deep within my soul and I ask myself, what do I want out of this um, music business? I think to myself, I want to push as many boundaries as I can and I want to take as many risks as I can. And I just want to go outside of the box as, I, as, as much as I can and still have some kind of pop appeal. And so I think... Um, I just want to, I just want to, uh, damn it. I'm alive and I, and I want to, and I want to, and I want to take some risks. Let's go. One thing that's really cool about like your project is the visuals. Something that kind of like you're really good at and strong at. And also you take a lot of kind of risks with like you make your own, like, didn't you make your own like 3d world for one of your videos? Isn't that what Thank you. He literally, I, well, from scratch. Fr- I did build for this song called Circuit Breaker. I designed this whole, I like designed this whole set where I got all this spray insulation and like painted it. And then I got all these uh, like heat blankets and like taped them all together to make this backdrop. And it took like two, three weeks of just, just working on this set to build it. So yeah, I mean, I, I like, I, I just p- building the world is, is, uh, um, just as exciting to me as uh, the music. I've got so much music it just on my hard drives, and you can just expect a lot of new music. And um, and to all my fans, I love you. And um, thank you for having me, Demi. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! The audience is going crazy right now. Let's go! <gasps> <Yeah. laughs>